Welcome back, everyone. I hope your stomachs are filled. Our next talk is going to be about clan, so let's welcome Kenji and Mick. So, yeah, this is a project we have now worked on uh, one and a half years, I think. About. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah, so we have this uh, uh, tagline, build your own clan net, uh, darknet. What does this actually mean? Um, you know, um, we have the internet where it's like a public place, everyone can access anything. And darknet is uh, something, it's like a network that's not indexed, indexed publicly, so it's like your own little private network. Um, so while we are doing this, uh, we want to make it possible that you can make the cloud uh, relevant or less desirable in your life. And um, why is this a problem? Um, so if you look at the inter in internet, you have like uh, service providers uh, that uh, held your um, data ca uh, captive. The, uh, they try to monetize you, you're basically uh, the uh, product rather than uh, the customer. And they have uh, things like algorithms that uh, try to like get you into looking at more of their content on their platforms. So we want to take a step back from that and build something new. Um, when you start hosting data yourself, it's a bit complicated on, or yeah, also very broken. You have uh, the internet uh, where you can no longer actually as a normal uh, person get easily uh, services reachable to from from one place to the other, so you have all these nuts in your network. Uh, when you do self-hosting, um, you're then actually um, responsible for your data. So you have data loss, so you need to make sure that you can kept, uh, also do that. And so it's like this is like a high barrier entry um, if you want to get started with that. And yeah, even experts don't do that because it's too much time. Even if they do this at work, they don't do this uh, in, uh, in, in their own time uh, all the time. So it's like time consuming into debug things and yeah, security is then maybe an afterthought. You maybe want to get it work first, uh, first working and then yeah. Um, so what's the solution here? Um, so we built with Clan um, a, a project where we want to make this all much easier. Um, so we take, uh, took uh, Nixos and uh, we built a unified uh, CLI around this. There's like a lot of tools that we built in the past, um, and we, now we are starting to like consolidate them and build like one user interface where we maybe take some de decisions away from people so they can just use something that works, and then maybe swap it out with something else. So we have like one CLI that uh, can install Nixos within like one command can also update the thing and then also may handle things like backups and secret management. Um, then, like, Nixos is good at handling one machine, like the configuration of that, but as soon as you have, like, have, like distributed systems, you also want to scale up your configuration to multiple machines and have them configured in a way that they actually work with that. By that. So this is uh, what we call the inventory, which I will also present in this talk. Um, then, uh, because of uh, how the internet works, it's hard to make services available, on, for example, on my laptop and then be able to reach people from a different laptop that is actually physically in the same Wi-Fi, but it's still they cannot access each other. Um, so uh, to solve this problem with an integrated uh, VPN that uh, work, um, makes it possible to, like, like, if hosts are physically closed, that they can actually reach each other again. And yeah, the whole thing, um, uh, that we also build around this is like uh, some extensions to Nix uh, that then allow you to have these uh, modules uh, that allow you then to uh, distribute these services and they have like all this functionality that you can distribute them across different machines. And uh, more things are set up automatically, uh, like uh, generating secrets for a service if you need that, for example. So um, now I give you like an architecture overview of the things we have built so far. So first off, we have this uh, unified uh, CLI interface. Um, then we have um, this uh, networking uh, uh, layer with a VPN, where machines uh, mesh with each other and try to find the shortest route. Uh, then we have uh, a new thing called uh, VAS, which is um, a secret management. So we had secret management in the path, but this one actually generates your secret, so it knows for a, for a particular service how you can uh, generate a secret for that. Um, so this is also annoying if you have like 50 machines and you need to generate 50 secrets, it doesn't scale well. Or if you have multiple secrets per machine, then it gets even worse. Um, then something um, which also is not handled by Nixos yet uh, is um, 
automatic backups and restore. Um, so we have something that can uh, allow services to declare how, how their state looks like and how it needs to be restored. Uh, then we have this uh, inventory again, and um, yeah, the, these community modules that then make use of all these features. So first of all, um, the CLI interface. Um, this basically wraps up um, for installation, for example, uh, tools like NixOS Anywhere and Disco. So you can install uh, um, NixOS onto machines with just a single command. But it not just do that, it also um, bootstraps um, your secrets on this machine. So if you have uh, secrets that need to be there, they're generated for this machine as soon as you do it. The same thing then also happens on um, updates. Um, yeah, if you have secrets defined that need to be generated, they're generated and then the machine's updated. We uh, uh, designed this update command a little bit for um, GD networks and a lot of machines. So we try to evaluate configuration on the target machine rather than trying to upload it locally and then upload. But we also have an escape hatch for that. We can also use a build machine, which then maybe may has more, more, um, more bandwidth than your local laptop. But imagine you're on a train uh, to Nixcon and try to update your machine, and you have like uh, just mobile network. Uh, you can just uh, just sends the command to run the update, but it doesn't do push the updates. We also have a um, flash command um, where when you want to, um, yeah, maybe you want to run a machine only on USB sticks. Um, there's like a flash command that can push configuration into a USB stick and then um, provisions the whole thing. Um, it can also update this way. Uh, yeah, so much for that. Um, we also integrate a mesh VPN. Um, this is actually how we started a bit. Um, so yeah, this was, is, uh, then allows us to have uh, fleets of machines that can talk to each other finally, so it uh, restores something we had in the 90s in the internet. Now you can have computers that can actually provide services themselves. So why, why do you need a special hardware to run a mail server? There's nothing special about that. And with a, a VPN, you can restore this. Um, we currently settled on a zero tier, um, just for the reason that it was the one solution that um, you can even run if, if both uh, machines are completely behind the firewall, they can still find each other. There are others, a lot of other VPNs, we tried uh, most of them, um, and we also want to integrate more of them because there's no one size uh, solution that makes everything perfect. Um, but yeah, this is just how we started. Um, then we have um, secret management. So um, yeah, many services uh, require some sort of uh, tokens, passwords, certificates, all kinds of things. And this is usually something, despite all the configuration management we have in NixOS, it's still something you need to do manually just now. You need to generate the secret, and maybe use, use one of these tools, or you could just copy the files. You have maybe something like HNIX or Aginix or like uh, SubSnix and stuff like that. Um, but it's actually cool if services themselves, they, uh, they know what, what secrets they need, if they can just generate that. So if you have an abstraction for that. And this is why, yeah. yeah. OK, let's look into how it's actually implemented. Um, this is how you would uh, define an SSH service that can generate uh, a public-private key pair on demand. So you uh, would um, define an, a generator for the SSH. So you see here, generators.ssh. We have the files that are exposed, like the ID ED, uh, pub and private key. So we set the secret to false. Uh, that means uh, it will not be encrypted by the password backend which also means that the value is available in an XS evaluation and can be used by other machines um, to um, authenticate the machine. And here we have uh, the runtime input. We need OpenSSH to uh, generate the key. And uh, the generators run in a sandbox, so it only has uh, the required commands inside of the sandbox. And now we have the script that uh, generates. And here we can see how the modules would access the values. So down here, uh, people that are already familiar with SOPs uh, will, will kind of see the pattern here. But you, for the secrets, we can um, put a path into the module itself, which means the module defines how the secret is generated and how it's accessed. And the CLI also exposes this functionality. If we now run for a machine that is called Web01, clan was generate. It shows us that it uh, generated a secret, 
uh, like the private key. But the private key is not shown here because it's a private key. But we can see uh, now uh, it diffs or it shows us like uh, the old key and the new key for the public key. So and we here we see the old key wasn't set before, so it's a newly initialized either machine or service. Because once we add a service for the machine, it would also uh, generate this way um, the key. But in this case, this is something you rarely would need uh, because on update of the machine, the um, secrets will be generated on um, installing a machine. So once you create a new machine uh, that have the services um, configured, the variables will then be uh, generated. Uh, sometimes you need a little bit uh, more intricate uh, design for your secret management. And this is where now uh, dependencies come in. So secret generators or var generators can, um, can define dependencies in between each other. So this is an example for a certificate authority. Um, it's over two slides. So we, this is how we generate uh, the SSH key for the authority. And what is new here is uh, two things. So share, which means this key is now available uh, for the generation of all of the machines together. So be, because if share would be uh, false, which is by default, each machine would get their new, their own secret even in a generator. And we don't deploy the certificate authority. Um, so the deploy is false on those variables. So it won't, the machines only will have the uh, transitive keys of, of the um, generator. The, now we uh, map uh, the key. We have a new field, the dependencies field. And this references uh, the generator from before. So we generate a CA first, and now we have a new input. So instead of hashtag uh, pound out, we have now also pound in, and we can reference the value and generate a SSH key that is signed by the certificate authority. And what it looks like on the CLI, when we list it, we, we see the secrets uh, are masked by the stars, and we see both keys are... Um, are shown here, but it also allows uh, for secret um, yeah, rotation. So we can say we could, we could put multiple services or without service, it would generate the whole machine, like the whole uh, secrets for the whole machine would be generated. But in this case, because we just say Clanvas generate web one and specify the service, only the service is generated. And because we now generated here the certificate authority, all keys that are dependent on the authority would be generated too. So here we see both uh, keys will be generated by the dependency management. And um, yeah, now we can have services up. Uh, so now the secret management is handed for, for the user. Um, but now when we serv have services up, we now need to manage state. So this is where our backup system comes in. So yeah, many, many services need either custom backups or have like special folders. And you don't really want uh, to backup your whole system. So usually the onus is on the consumer or user uh, to specify how the backup strategy works. Um, so you have custom scripts or maybe you miss like a folder which you actually want to backup or you backup too much because you're overly cautious. But um, we found uh, it's a good idea to have each service that wants the backup to define how they want their backup to create it. And it's extensible by multiple backends. We currently have rsync implemented and Borg backup. Um, so like a remote solution or like a, a more local solution. Um, but they can be extended by multiple um, backends. Uh, so this is how a service would opt into state management. So we have like uh, uh, the state uh, variable and we have the namespace zero tier. So now for the VPN zero tier, um, yeah, the varlib zero tier one, like uh, this directory is now marked and associated with the module. So if you want to restore just the zero tier module, you can only restore only the module. But we will um, look at it a little bit later. Sometimes you need uh, more complex uh, backup uh, strategies. In this case, uh, you can implement in your service for your 
for example, matrix server, um, a post and uh, pre uh, backup command, which is then run on a hook if, if the backup is um, actually invoked. So yeah, the, the backends are pluggable. So yeah, uh, it is basically, uh, yeah, uh, it is an API that everybody can just uh, hook another uh, backup implementation into. Uh, on, on our blog, we have a like very, very simple, but for slides, it's still a bit big implementation, just how you would do it with a tar fire. So if anybody's interested, uh, they can they can look it up. So how would uh, backups be created? You can do it on the command line again, and this will figure everything out. If you have the right permissions on the machine, then you can do remote backups uh, through remote machines with this command. Um, and as I hinted earlier, backups are service aware. So if you just want to restore one service for your machine, this is possible. But uh, now the command gets a little bit long because um, you need more meta information for that. So we have backups restore, then we have the service, the machine it should be restored by. Now, now we add the backend provider because, because you could have multiple backend uh, backup implementations even uh, for multiple machines. So you could have rsync and like local backups, and you could have remote backups, and you can choose which one you uh, want to backup now, and then you get get your snapshot in there. And this command would, that you see here, would stop the Synapse server, delete the database, restore it from backup, and then restart the service again. Uh, when we uh, when we uh, tried uh, and sat down with users, and uh, especially trying to set up the Borg backup backend with, with users. Uh, it's a still a lot of things that they have to set up. You have, some people may be aware, you have like custom repos for each machine you want to create. You have, um, uh, you have keys that, that you, on top of the SSH keys, you need like even more keys in order to work, uh, make it work. And this is where we saw the need for a way um, of machines to create their relationship or, or show the relationship between services. And this is what we call the inventory. Um, it's kind of like an, an abstraction on top, uh, which can define roles. So inside of the back block backup service here, we have the role server and we have the role client. Um, or for example, some services may not need multiple um, Roads, for example, SyncSync -Sync works just peer-to-peer, -peer, so each each client is basically um, yeah a peer just. So this is how you would uh, show the distributed um, um, role of your machines. In this case, we have the service inventory services, Borg backup. Borg backup is now the backup provider uh, from the inventory, and now we have a namespace because you could have multiple. Uh, different uh, Borg backups running to multiple machines. So in this case, this is the Borg backup implementation for the NAS. And now we see we have roles.servers machines. So now uh, the, the server of the Borg backup module is the, um, is the NAS. So, and in this case, the client is the laptop. And this is all you need uh, to have a, to have the relation because uh, the VAS will be created. Even the Borg backup service itself is, um, is then aware of, um, of its own backup. So if you backup the NAS, it uh, also knows everything. So um, in this example here, the VAS will be generated. So the client generates the encryption key and SSH key. The encryption key is like the repo key. The machines are configured. so. Um, yeah, basically, each instance knows what it needs from the other machine and can can do everything properly. Uh, the machines will be deployed, and then machines send the backups uh, to the server. Um, and if you have really multiple machines, it's um, it's it's much nicer to have services namespaced in like a tags kind of system, and that's what we in implemented. So instead of machines, you can also say that your service um, supports tags. Now you see client or tags backup. Now you can tag machines with, with multiple tags. 
Uh, and this way, now the laptop and desktop would be back up to the NAS. Yeah, and this allows for pretty flexible management then of your services because um, this is all that's needed uh, for the whole bulk, bulk backup to work currently. Yeah, um, this was a, a lot of a different concepts to digest in. So I'm just uh, uh, like summarizing again. So we had the unified CLI that uh, can handle the whole life cycle of installing and updating machines. And then we have this mesh VPN, so we can actually have machines be connected with each other no matter where they are in the world. We have this VAS system, um, which um, takes a lot of uh, manual work of uh, managing secrets from you and uh, backups, of course, and the inventory system to make it scalable to multiple machines. Um, yeah, what, what, these are the active features we implemented today, um, but we have uh, more things to come next year. Um, so what we're currently working on is uh, how can we make this uh, something that uh, not just programmers can use, uh, but also have some um, user interface for that. Um, so this is also what we're working on. So this whole inventory system is built in a way that it's also, um, you can also have programs writing these uh, configuration files, um, so that then hopefully at some point you just click on, ah, I want next load, so I just click it, and then I want to peer, uh, some other applications, and yeah, yeah, this builds up your whole machine. Um, yeah, when you run services, you also have uh, sometimes a machine being broken, services being broken, so we also need some sort of monitoring. Um, yeah, we also need to figure out this in the same way we did uh, all the other things, and also um, more advanced user management, because you want to maybe have users owning different machines or being able to diff uh, access different services. Um, so yeah, these are things we want to do in the future. So that uh, summarizes uh, our talk, and we would be now open for your questions. Thank you. Okay, a lot of questions. Uh, ah, yeah, also, I um, should mention, okay, there's, uh, um, we have a homepage, you can go there, you can have a matrix shutter, you can uh, drop by, uh, say hello, it's all open source, uh, there's no, no third party services required, you can use it on its own, documentation stairs, also good. Yep. Do you know who was first? Uh, 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 yeah, him. Where? Right who? Here. Yeah. You? Hmm? Okay. Uh, did you uh, think a bit about ways to migrate one service from one machine to another? Because uh, we already have all the network and all the passwords, so... Migrating, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we've thought about it. I mean, and it seems like about it's more doable because we already know the state, we have the secrets. So now migrating just means oh, we take these services from A to B. Uh, but we haven't implemented it, but yeah, something that um, yeah. we we have definitely thought about it. But yeah, it's yeah. Not in scope <laughs> and like uh, once we built this backup thing, we was like, wait, we can just like, use new hardware, restore the backup, and then everything just goes back to the thing it was before. Yeah, yeah. Um, so my experience with this kind of systems is, you try to tie multiple Nixos configurations together. And then you end up in a situation where if you want to make a change, you end up staring at the computer for five minutes waiting for evaluation to complete. How's uh, the eval time on this? Um, the eval, yeah we, we, yeah, I, yeah, we wouldn't want to have a system where some machine needs to evaluate the configuration of this machine. Uh, we already had this, so it didn't work. Like, and, and there was a system part that tried this. So what we did is the inventory is more like a, its own uh, separate thing, uh, which it can be, it doesn't need to be even Xcode, it can be JSON. Um, and the idea is that each machine, when it when you update it, it will pull uh, the stuff from the inventory that it cares about. Like it, it knows it's what much machine it's it's itself, and then it figures out what are the other instances. So we don't put everything into uh, uh, the, the inventory. We just put the information that is needed to make multiple machines work together. So the inventory is filled in when the machine is deployed and it's filled in, and then yeah. other machines can depend on that. Like so out of the next build, out it, of the next eval. Yeah, yeah, one yeah, layer yeah, above yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it would be crazy. It would, mm -hmm. would not work, I think. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Um, hi. Uh, yeah. First up, uh, real cool work. Uh, I'm excited to see this. Um, about the backups, uh, I wanted to have something similar myself, um, and like thought about it a little bit. Um, I wanted to ask. Uh, have you considered creating an RFC um, for like your backup um, implementation? Implementation, basically, uh, because yeah, like this, I feel this really would benefit from being in Nix packages okay. and like as many modules as possible using this interface. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the first question, and the other one. Um, 
have you considered doing automatic backups uh, before deploying, like basically before uh, Nexus rebuild switch or something, um, to be able to do the rollback uh, to all generations, um, not just like from the system, but also being able to roll back state? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, I think there's uh, more things in this area we could implement with uh, doing this during deployment. Um, yeah, we just haven't done it yet. Um, Regarding uh, things, uh, regarding the uh, stuff for FCs, yeah, I mean, we, we do this talk, uh, so we, we like tell everyone about the things that we built, and uh, we would like to get as much as possible also to Nixus, because writing our, like maintaining our, uh, like we would now to need to maintain all these modules and secrets things ourselves, uh, and it would be not much nicer if everyone just would do that. So yeah, I hope that we can get some standard that everyone is happy with. That's why we also try to make things more pluggable, so it's more compatible with everyone what they need. Yeah, like the design is, is sort of like we want to be able to upstream it at some point. If it's our implementation or similar, it doesn't matter. But we our design process thinks about how we can move towards that stage. Yeah, I mean we, we did develop this in a smaller group so we can actually iterate the things. Like for example, the vast thing is already the second iteration of this because we figured that we missed something in the first one. Um, but yeah, I think that would be, for example, one candidate we, that we try to get uh, to wider use first. So uh, let's say I wanted to use like one isolated path, like the VAS or secrets module. How coupled are uh, all of these different sub-modules to each other? Like, do I need to run all of the clan modules to get some of the functionality? Yes and no. It depends. Like, if you can just use the VARS on its own. But you, currently, we don't have a way to import it nicely without importing everything. But it's totally possible to just use the backup functionality and just the VAS functionality. With the inventory, it's kind of possible, but not really, because currently, it's just the modules we built. And we build on top of the VARS and backup system. But in theory, this is also, you could just use it in isolation, too. Yeah. Well, thanks. Yeah, all, all modules uh, sort of assume. So if you then use you create your own modules that only use a subset, that would be different. But you wouldn't use then ours. First of all, uh, thank you for the awesome talk. This looks very, very amazing. Um, so my question would be, is there a business model behind this? Are you getting funding? Like, uh, how are you developing this? No, we, we get, we're getting fun, funded to work on this, uh, this uh, no business model, so open source project. Okay, because it's it looks too good to not be paid, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah. Also, the the slide and the the website it just looks very premium for an open source project. Yeah, it's it's <laughs> like what's like what decider makes a big difference uh, if you have it on a project. I can tell. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Yeah. Okay, just a few more questions. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, Regarding your backup strategy, does backing up currently require you to uh, stop the services before? Um, yeah, just now it uh, doesn't. Uh, it's probably not the most ideal situation. Um, I mean, backup providers can actually choose, or like services can choose to stop stuff, actually. But yeah, we probably should have, yeah. Ideally, have some sort of file system snapshots, but it's always a bit diff tricky to implement. Exactly. I. Yeah, because right, then you require some file problem. system to be there. Uh, so we just haven't, yeah, we didn't rent down this rabbit hole yet. Um, um, because we, I think we have some services in Nixpick, I guess, already that have some sort of backup script. Yeah. For example, Vault Warden, I think, or ah. Paperless. And they usually um, back up the database and then the files. And if it takes some time, then you might end up with an inconsistent backup. So I yeah. guess you would require to stop it. But yeah, I mean, nice services services themselves can specify how they want to be backup. So if they need okay. this custom logic, it could be done on this level. But maybe something like uh, yeah, file system snapshots would allow it to have services where you don't need this at all. Uh, all right. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, I'm sorry. I'm afraid I'll have to <laughs> close the question session. Um, yeah. Let's th thank our speakers again. Thank you.